What's going on everybody, Tribbles in here. Welcome back to the Bourbon Wrench. Today, we're gonna to be talking about six bourbons, six whiskeys that you might not know about and that you probably should. These are bottles that are either just up and coming, they're coming from a state you really don't think about, they're a whiskey you don't think about, you've just walked past them, they got a plastic little screw cork, but they're delicious. There's no waiting in line for them. There's no selling your left nut for them. It's just good bourbon. You go in the store and you get it. So, huge little asterisks next to this. A lot of these are upcoming whiskeys or they're smaller distilleries or whatever, okay? Their reach might not be to you. So you might watch this whole video and be like, dude, I've never seen any of those. Well, I'm sorry. Just go try something else on the shelf you never heard of. But to the rest of you, put these on your list so the next time you're in the store, just have it in your mind, a little mental note, and if you see one of these, it might be worth picking one of them up. Let's get right into it. Bottle number one is gonna go to Jepson's Bourbon. That is right. <laughs> the people who make Malort. They have a bourbon, sourced bourbon, but man, is this stuff friggin' delicious. I don't know too much if they do different, you know, variations of this, but this is a single barrel. This one in particular is a store pick, particularly the cast strength. This one's 59.95, so any sort of cast strength single barrel stuff that they're coming out with is cheap and it's good. They're like a double oaked foolproof. You know what I'm saying? Are you kidding me? It's like a 1910 or a Woodford Double Oaked. And it's like cheaper than those too. Yes, it comes with a little screw top, a little plastic, you know, crap. But it tastes good. That's all that matters. I really don't care if it comes in a plastic jug, um, a milk carton. If it tastes good, it tastes good. Simple as that. What I have to say about this is it's one of those bottles, the price alone makes it worth trying for you. If you've walked past one of these and you're like, ah, that look just looks not appealing. It's cheap enough to try it and there's a very good chance you're going to like it. So if you can get one of these Jepson's bourbons, give it a shot. All right, moving on. This is kind of a two-parter. The next two bottles are coming from Texas. Yeah, are you kidding me? Texas making my list? Of course it's making my list because they're putting out some good stuff. Now back in the day, and by back in the day I mean like 2018 when I was getting into the bourbon scene, I really feel was when Texas bourbon was really starting to come into the scene. It was, you know, gaining a foothold. More and more people were getting to know it. The problem was maybe a lot of that early stuff had some similarities. Maybe they just hadn't quite figured it out yet. Um, you might have heard people talk about the Texas funk. To me, it was very, very black licorice, just not appealing. It just wasn't anything special. Everyone kept saying, well, it's only like two years old. Uh, Texas being so hot, everything ages very rapidly. It just absorbs in that barrel really, really quick. It puts off an off-putting taste. And uh, I think though, that stigma carried on and I just never good, uh, gave anything from Texas a chance again until I had this particular bottle that we're gonna be talking about next. It really opened my eyes that, hey, maybe not all Texas bourbons taste the dang same, and maybe you should just give it a shot. So, that being said, the first Texas one on this list is gonna go to Still Austin Cast Strength. This was the first one that I tried that just blew my mind. I think it came to me in a flight, and it was like, name where this whiskey came from, and I was like, this gotta be from Kentucky or something. Guess what, Texas. Yes, this stuff is still around two years old. It says aged at least two years old, okay? It's a cast strength at least two years old. Let's face it, it ain't much older than two. 
It does not taste like that. This tastes like a six to eight year Kentucky bourbon. I'm not kidding you. It is so good. If you have any sort of stigma or thought about Texas having some weird funk, this does not have it. I don't know what the difference is. This stuff's incredible. I think if you're adventurous, uh, you don't even have to be adventurous. If you like Kentucky bourbon, you just want a new good bottle, try this. If you're someone who says, I want to see what something tastes like outside of Kentucky and from Texas, I would say definitely start with Still Austin. Um, it might kind of spoil you if you go down the Texas rabbit hole. I don't know how deep that hole is, so I don't know where it leads you, but this is a great place to start. Exceptional bottle. And that leads us into one that you really might not have heard of. Still Austin is really gaining traction, and for good reason. They're putting out exceptional stuff. This other bottle, I've never freaking heard of them. Devil's River Single Barrel. Texas Mash Bill, this is from Total Wine. This is a Total Wine store pick. And so if you got Total Wine, go in there, see if they got some Devil's River, see if they got a pick of it, because let me tell you, blew my freaking mind how good this stuff is. Again, what also blows my mind, aged in Texas a minimum of two years. Two years! 65% alcohol, and this thing tastes like a butterscotch caramel bomb. No Texas funk, none of that weird crap. It's just pure sweetness, it's pure heat, it gets you to where you need to be. Again, I think I had this one in a blind flight of some sort. I had a buddy set me up a Texas blind flight and I downright refused this game from Texas. I said, you're screwing with me. This is not from Texas. Now, Devil's River, I'm sure this is a pretty small place. I'm sure their reach isn't that great. So, and like I said, this one came from a Total Wine. So if you have Total Wine, check your Total Wines. I really don't know who gets this. It might not be many of you, but if you see one of these, I think it's worth trying. All right, moving into our fourth bottle, and this is gonna be a shameless plug for the Bourbon Ranch channel. And it's a plug for the distillery and everything that they're doing. This is just, you know, talking good about everyone, okay? But my fourth bottle is an Obtanium Light Whiskey. Yeah, we're going light whiskey. Some of you might not even know what a light whiskey is. The condensed version is bourbon has rules. You can't distill it over 160. Light whiskey, you can. Back in the day, they were like, hey, we should make a vodka like whiskey. Like, I don't know, just distill the heck out of it so it strips all the flavors so all the ladies will drink it. Well, nowadays, they're aging them like crazy. 14, 15 year old light whiskeys, they're throwing them in these barrels, they're letting them do its thing. Totally different, it's a game changer. That being said, going back to the Obtanium, it is MGP, light whiskey. They've been aging quite some time, very good stuff. Usually, almost always, very high proof. Like, light whiskey, there ain't nothing light about it. This one, particular 64.2, they go up into hazmat range, it's crazy. Now, why this is a shameless plug and why you should give it a shot, you know, this particular bottle is a bourbon wrench pick with us and the Shelf Turds, whiskeychannel.com. This was our first pick, you don't know Jack. It was finished in a Jack Daniels barrel. And we also have two other Obtanium Light Whiskeys. Two, count them, two. With the addition of two, count them, two. Marshmallows. marshmallows. Two Light Whiskeys. Two 15 year old Light Whiskeys, Shady's Back, and Kira's Revenge. Now I get it, some people don't really care for light whiskey. It is different, it is not a bourbon, it's just its own thing. So if you've never tried one, I think you just should give it a shot just to see what it's like. But I think our two picks that are coming out are perfect examples of how they can be different. The Shady's Back is the most non-light whiskey, light whiskey that I've ever tried and that's why I was so adamant about picking that one. It almost tasted like a bourbon, like a double oaked bourbon. It was crazy. The Kira's Revenge, much more like a traditional 
super sweet. These are very, very sweet confectionery sugar, you know, white icing type of sweetness. It's very, very sweet stuff. So yeah, that was a total Patreon, you know, plug, but if that's something that doesn't interest you, still, Gene over at Cat's Eye Distillery is doing so many crazy awesome things. It's worth picking up, trying one if you see one of these uh, Obtainium picks, whatever, give them a shot. All right, moving on to the number five bottle is gonna go to the Blue Note Juke Joint. Now, this is no stranger to my channel. I've talked so highly about this bottle because it's downright freaking delicious. These Juke Joint single barrels, this is a store pick, comes in 119.6. It's uncut, unfiltered, and just stupid. It's stupid how good it is. The price that you get these for, stupid. Everything about this is stupid. To include that you've never tried one of these. That's dumb. You need to change that. The price is ridiculous. The taste is ridiculous. It's just fantastic. And, and I rave about this all the time. And people are like, dude, you're going to let this, the cat out of the bag. You're going to ruin it for all of us. No. The people who need to hear how good this is aren't going to go and get one of these. They're going to keep standing in line for Weller Special Reserve and how, oh my God, that's what's dumb. You know what's not dumb? Blue Note. They're doing great things. That's how you do bourbon. Give them a shot. This distillery is in Memphis, so I don't really know the reach that they get. So, you know, again, maybe not a lot of you will ever even see this, but if you are someone who can come across one of these, definitely worth trying. All right, moving on to the last bottle of this list, and I might have saved my favorite for last. Tumbling Dice. Like, what even is that? This is an MGP Ross and Squibb, MGP sourced bourbon that is just out of this world. If you look at the die on the front, it tells you how old of a single barrel this is. So this is a five-year-old single barrel, 118 proof. I mean, look at that. It's five years old. Look how dark that is. It is ridiculous. I don't know what kind of sorcery they're putting on this stuff. It is so heavy, thick. Again, super chocolate. This is like another barrel proof wood for double oak or something. It's crazy. This is a heavy rye mash bill. So 36 rye, 60% corn, 4% malted barley. It just stands up against pretty much any other $60 bourbon on the market. I'm telling you. And it's six or five years old. Name me another $60 bottle and I would at least give it a dang 50-50 shot that you would like this one better. It's that good. I'm, so many people I know have talked about, I've seen that and I just walked by it, I don't know what it is. No, turn around, go buy one. I promise you, you're gonna freaking like it. Oh, there we go, there we have it. Those are six bottles that you might not have heard of that you need to go try. Like, right now, I don't know, close the video, leave a like and subscribe, and then go to the store and pick one of these up if you have them. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Seriously, if you've tried any of these bottles, leave a comment down below what you think of them. Let others know what you think of them so they can go read your comment, make a educated decision on which one of these they should go try. I've done enough talking. Get on out of here. I'm Trev Wilson. I'll see you in the next video.